Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Lord, for that power working blood that you've given unto us. We thank you, Father, for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. Jesus, we worship you. We honor you. We give you all the praise. We place that fresh covering of your blood upon us right now this morning, Lord. Open up our hearts, Father, for all that you have in store today, and we give you all praise, all glory, and all honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Strength arises, we wait upon the Lord. We will wait.
Jesus, for your strength as we wait upon you. Oh, we praise your name. Hallelujah. Oh, the splendor of the King. Oh, 
hearken unto my voice and let your ears hear what the Spirit has to say to his churches. Listen, ponder upon these things, for many great things are about to take place. Tornadoes like you haven't seen before. Earthquakes, earthquakes. Again, I warned California and the West Coast. I have warned you twice before. I speak unto you now. There's a shifting of the plates in an earthquake that shall take place far greater, far greater than any earthquake that has ever been recorded. Listen, it's time to leave. I've told you that before. I speak unto the nations of the world. The end is about to come. The end is about to come. Therefore I say unto you, come unto me, draw close to me, listen to the things that I have to say unto you. Listen carefully, for the drought shall expand, and the flooding has destroyed crops. The economy shall go down even more, and the prices shall rise even higher. Listen, there shall be a lack of food. There shall be calamities here and calamities there. And yet, those in leadership will tell you everything is okay. The false prophets will tell you everything is okay. No. The midnight hour is approaching. It's time to come in safely to the fold that I can protect you, that I can care for you, that I can take you through this time in great victory. Be not foolish. Do not put it off to another generation. Don't put it off into years. But wake up. Draw close to me. For I can take you through this hour in great victory. I can make you the overcomers. I can make you the ones that people shall flock to, to find the truth. I will speak to you again, saith your Father God. I will reveal unto you the other calamities that shall soon come. Wake up, I say. Wake up and draw nigh to me. Allow me to be your teacher. Allow me to be your guide. Allow me to mold you exactly how I will. For it's not your will, saith the Father, but it's mine. And for those who walk in my will, they will be the ones that are victorious. They will be the ones that are overcomers. They will be the ones that I am able to use because they are getting their direction from me. They are not getting their direction from man or another gospel, but they are getting their direction from me. For I say unto you, the darkness will continue to spread. The storms will continue to get more violent. Tempers will rise even higher than they already are, so that war will be seen all over. O oh, my children, hear my voice. Come closer unto me. Come into the safety of the fold that I might protect you, that I might be your shield in these hours and these days that are yet to come. For truly the hour is late and the time is short. But there are many things that are taking place and shall come to pass in the days ahead. So listen very carefully unto my voice. Heed unto my warnings, 
For truly I warn you sh so that I can protect you, so that you can move back into the safety zone. For some still remain outside of that area and have chosen not to hear my warnings. So I have warned them yet again. How much longer will you tarry, saith the Lord? Will you tarry till the shaking starts? For truly, if you tarry that long, you shall be lost with the rest. Heed unto my warnings this day, and do as I have instructed you to do, and therein shall you receive great victory, saith the Lord. Therefore I say unto you, fear not, fear not the warnings. But I must speak to my people that they flee the places that I have told them to flee, that they move from the ocean at least 75 miles, that they do the things I have already told them, for the warnings will not continue to come even as the warnings no longer come to Israel because they're going to do their own thing. I will not continue to speak, but I speak because I love you.
Jesus. Isn't it so good to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Praise the Lord. He is more than enough. Amen. Praise the Lord. Brother David. Praise the Lord. We're going to continue worshiping the Lord this morning in our giving. Continue to get more money in the mail. Every single week. Hallelujah. We praise the Lord for that. Father, we thank you again, Lord, for this time to give into your work. We thank you, Lord, that um, you're using these gifts for your honor and glory. And you're returning, Lord, 30, 60, and 100 fold. And we just give you the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. We welcome everybody this morning on this Father's Day. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord really was speaking very powerfully this morning. Two weeks in a row, He gives a strong warning to two different places. And I know in my lifetime, we heard some of these warnings when I was young. But the times are changing and things are getting closer. And people who haven't heeded need to heed. Hear the voice of the Lord this day. Do as He has called you to do. And be blessed because of it. Walk in the victory that He has for you. Hallelujah. And we know that regardless of what happens, if we're walking with the Lord, these things shall not come nigh our dwelling. As long as we're doing everything that He has told us to do. The drought will not affect us. The lack of food will not affect us. The disasters on the right hand and on the left hand will not affect us. 
if we're walking with the Lord and doing the things He has told us to do. He's given us those promises. And He keeps reminding us of those every time He speaks warning. He reminds us how He's going to watch over us. How He's going to take care of us. How He's going to bring us through these days safely. That we do not need to walk in fear. But that we walk with our full trust and our full confidence in Him. That we can be the victors that He's called for us to be in these days and hours. Because for the church, it's an exciting time. Because our Lord is coming soon. We see the signs all over. And He's going to move in a mighty and powerful way throughout His churches all across the world. As the last great outpouring is poured out upon His people. It's going to be a good time, even though it sounds like a bad time. It will be a bad time for the world. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Just keep your eyes focused upon Him. Amen? Amen. Well, I'm going to ask that we get all the fathers up here this morning so we can honor them on this Father's Day. You know, it's funny because on Mother's Day, there's, there's usually twice as many mothers as there is on Father's Day. That's okay, though. Praise the Lord. Well, does anybody have anything they'd like to share? Special this morning, give a testimony, anything from any of the fathers? I want to thank the Lord. This week I uh, had a customer on another end of a 6x6 six six, and we were carrying it off the truck. He dropped his end. And as you know, I don't know if you know, but when someone drops a big long board, the other end flies. Well, it flew up and it hit my knee. And uh, I went to emergency room and uh, I didn't have any tears, but I had a big old bruise. I mean, a big bruise. But you know what? It could have tore my knee all up, but it didn't. So I just want to thank the Lord. Anybody else want to share anything? All that he does for us. Glory. Father Dennis, too. Yes, we do. The devil's been, been fighting, and he's uh, just in a lot of pain. <clears throat> trying to stay in a position that uh, where the pain is relieved. So, <clears throat> you know, I just want to thank the Lord for everything He does does for us, and I thank the Lord for my family and uh, you know being able to watch my children grow up in a in church and um, worship the Lord and and uh, have the joy of the Lord in their lives, and it just is a really great blessing to me and. Uh, see how my wife has grown in the Lord since I first met her all those years ago and so I just really thank the Lord for everything that he's doing he's moving in our, he's moving in my life in in a powerful way and uh you know, I'm glad to be a part of the church and the ministry here and uh just glad to be doing whatever he has for me and so I just thank him for that anybody else want to say anything if you're married love your wives me show it. <laughs> Anybody else? All right, well, I'm going to ask Sister Gwen to pray over our fathers this morning and uh, ask the Lord for a special blessing and uh, for <clears throat> a special touch for Pastor Dennis as well. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the fathers that you've blessed us with, and we just ask, Lord, that they're just going to grow even more in love with you as well as with their family. Father, I just thank you, Lord, that as you, we honor them this day. I thank you, Lord. We just pray, that, pray this special blessing upon their lives. 
We thank you, Father, that you've anointed them, that you've gifted them, that you've given them all the keys that they need, Lord, to raise the family successfully. And we thank you, Lord, for the wisdom and knowledge that you've bestowed upon them. And we just thank you, Lord, that you're just going to bless them extra special today. Father, we just lift up to you, Pastor Dennis. We just ask, Lord, that you will just touch him with your healing power right now. Father, we thank you, Lord, that even right now that he is just feeling your presence come upon him in a very special way. We just rebuke the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. We command him to loose his hold. And, Father, we just thank you, Lord, that ministering spirits is going to him right now and ministering unto him, encouraging him. We come against the pain and we command the pain to cease in Jesus. Jesus name and we just thank you Lord for total and complete relief right now in the name of Jesus and father we thank you and give you the praise and glory and honor for that father we just thank you Lord that you're just gonna bless these fathers and we thank you Lord that you're gonna continue to give unto you give unto them all the wisdom and knowledge Lord that they have need of Lord to raise their families in the way that you desire and we just give you all praise in Jesus name amen all right, well, we got a little gift for everybody, a certificate, so grab one as you back. All right, Paula, why don't you uh, get ready and come.
I can hear it a little. There it goes. Guess it was taking its time. I, I knew I couldn't hear it. I was right. Praise the Lord. Yep, I got those in my pocket. You got to remind me of that. See, I'm... Praise the Lord. This morning, I'm going to just read our prayer request quick. Stan from India says they have eight coming Sunday for miracles and healings from cancer. Little John in Liberia says it's still bad here. We need your prayers. Friends from Down Under say they have five coming with MS and RA. Shorty from Guatemala says it's their first time coming. We are a church of about 175. We have many guests coming for miracles and healings. Please pray for our church. From Cortland, Eric has a bad heart problem and a tumor in his brain. He also has to be on oxygen full time. He really needs a touch from God. Sumo from South Africa says we have we pastor two churches in Africa. One is 114 and the other is 122. Their first time coming. Please pray for our people. Roman from Bolivia says they have nine coming for miracles, four for cancer, three MS, and two RA. And I know there are many others out there who are watching who are in need of a touch from the Lord. Amen. This morning our message is kind of more of a salvation method, message from our Father to the Fathers. Amen. I believe this morning there are many who are going to, for the first time, come to the saving knowledge of the Father. There are many this morning who are going to decide that they need to take one step closer to the Father. And there are those this morning who just need a touch from the Father to get back on top. Today is your day, our Father's Day message from the Lord. Not that it's not for everybody else, but the Father is an important part of the church and the home. The Lord says that the Father is the head of the house. And <clears throat> he can only do his job if he's where he needs to be. Amen. Not that our wives don't help us out, especially those women who trust in the Lord. But it's important for the father to be in the place that he should be. The Bible says a house divided against itself cannot stand. And especially in these days and these hours, we need both mothers and fathers serving the Lord Amen. to be truly successful. Amen. The title of this sermon this morning is Because, Because, Because. <clears throat> and we're coming out of Ephesians chapter 1 through um, verse 1 through 17. Today I want to talk about how as Christians we receive personal blessings from the Lord. We already have everything we need to be a great success in God's kingdom. But most of us are rendered incapable of doing such because we are not aware that we have them. Did you get that? We have already everything that we need. But we're not aware that we have them. We have at our command the entire blessings of the Almighty's power and we don't even know it. Here's a little story for you. In America during the Great Depression, there was a man named Yates who ran a sheep farm in Texas. Times were very hard and he was quickly going under. Things got so bad that he finally had to go on welfare just to feed his children. Just about the time he was thinking of packing up and walking off his land, a team of geologists contacted him and told him that they thought oil might be under his property. They said if he would give them permission to dig, they would give him a percentage of any oil they found. Mr. Yates may have been a poor man, but the man was not stupid. He knew he had nothing to lose and maybe everything to gain, so he gave them the legal permission to dig on his land. They finally got all set up and began to drill. They went down 500 feet and no oil. 800 feet, no oil. 1,000 feet, no oil. They had decided that they would drill once more, and then if they did not find any oil, they would pack up and leave. The next day they started drilling, and when they reached 1,100 feet, they found the second largest oil reserve in Texas. 
Overnight, the family Yates went from being destitute and hungry to being one of the richest families in Texas. Man, that's quite a story. Amen. Let me ask you a question. Before they found the oil, was Mr. Yates sitting on millions of dollars? He absolutely was. But since he did not have any knowledge of it, it was no good to him at all. It's kind of like having millions in a Swiss bank account, but not knowing the account number to access it. Now that's a problem. You can have all the money in the world, but if you don't have the account, you ain't getting it. <clears throat> have you ever known anyone who was spoiled? I think we all can say yes to that at some point in time. Maybe it was a child whose parents gave him everything he wanted. Or maybe it was a young teenage girl whose boyfriend wooed her by buying her gifts of love that only a teenage boy could buy. How would you like to have someone like that? Someone who loved you so much, they want to give you everything they have. Actually, we already have that. That person is God. God loves us so much that he gives us every blessing he has, but we do not use it because we are not aware that we have them. Praise the Lord. We're going to turn to the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 1 through 7. <clears throat> Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God to the saints in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he has chosen us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the ones he loved. In him, we have the redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. This small passage is packed full of truth. There is so much truth that it is easy to miss each time we read it. Let me quickly share some knowledge with you. In verse 1, Paul says he is an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. That means that Paul is aware that God has called him to his purpose. Paul was chosen by God to be an apostle of Christ. Paul didn't just wake up one day and say, I'm going to be an apostle today. No, God said, Paul, I choose you. This is what I want you to do. Because if you look at Paul's life, where did Paul start? Well, the Lord had to blind him to get his attention because he was persecuting the church. Right. And he went on to be one of the greatest leaders in the church age Amen. of that time. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. So we see that God called him. Not man. Not brother Peter. Not brother John. Paul was called by God. Amen? The verse goes on to say that Paul is writing to the saints in Ephesus, which are the faithful in Jesus Christ. That refers to all of us today who are faithful to Jesus Christ. He's writing to us. Now be aware that Paul is not writing to all of those in Ephesus that go to church regularly, or those that sit in church wearing their very best clothes with their noses so high in self-adoration it looks like they're looking at the ceiling. Paul is writing to those who are truly faithful in their hearts to Jesus. That speaks to anyone today who is truly faithful in their hearts to Jesus. Amen. There are a lot of people out there that aren't. Right. <clears throat> I have a friend that is newly walking with the Lord again. At least he's trying to be. I don't believe he's where he needs to be, but he wants to be there. Amen. And I help him as much as I can. And he started going to a church, and um, he ran into a girl he used to know back in high school who is now married and has kids. And here he sees this woman who is going to church, and, you know, you he, he look at her as a Christian, and all she wants to do is, is uh, try and get with him, get together with him. He's like, I can't believe this. She's married and got kids. That's just an example of what is out in the churches. Not all those sitting in the churches are truly faithful in their hearts to Jesus. 
But for those of us who are, this is the Lord's word to us. In verse 2, Paul wishes then grace and peace in the name of God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. That testifies to the deity of Jesus or to the fact that Jesus is also God. In verse 3, we see what I said a moment ago about having all the blessings of God. It says he has blessed us. Amen. Who is us? Us is the faithful in Jesus Christ to those he's writing to. We are his sons and daughters. Amen. <clears throat> the text says he has blessed us with spiritual blessings. This means that in Christ we have all the benefits of knowing God, being chosen for salvation, being adopted as his children, forgiveness, insight, the gifts of the Spirit, power to do God's will, the hope of living forever with Christ. Amen. Because we have an intimate relationship with Christ, we can enjoy these blessings now. <clears throat> but we have to be in that place. We have to have that close relationship to the Lord. Because if we don't, then these words don't apply to us. That's right. But the great thing is, even if we don't now, if we do later, they apply to us. Amen. At any point, we take that step and become closer to the Lord, the things that didn't apply before apply now. Praise the Lord. In verse 4, we find that we have all been chosen and the chooser was God himself. He chose us before he even made the world. Right. Now, if that doesn't make you feel very special, nothing will. That's right. God chose you. Amen. Paul says that God chose us in him. What he means is that salvation depends totally on him. Jesus. We are not saved because we deserve it, but because God is loving and freely gives us salvation. <clears throat> Predestination means that God is the one who wills who will be saved. God wills that all could be saved. Amen. But some choose not to follow. Right. And in the end, they'll face the music. Right. Because even when it's all over, <clears throat> after the thousand year millennial reign, comes the great white throne judgment Amen. when all will be judged. Right. All. From the time when man first walked the earth. So you can't ever run away from it. <clears throat> Why not choose God? Amen? In verse 5, he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in according with his pleasure and will. Predestined means marked out beforehand. Amen. This is another way of saying that salvation is God's work and not our own doing. The Bible says we are not saved by works. Lest any man should boast. But it is a gift from God for us. Because he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever might believe shall have eternal life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory. It was his great plan. Also in verse 5 we find that he actually adopted us into his heavenly family. We are joint heirs to the kingdom of God along with Jesus Christ who sits on the right hand of God. <clears throat> Let me just explain adoption to you a little bit more. During the time the New Testament was written, when a family adopted a child, there was no immediate big celebration of that adoption. But when the child reached the proper age, there was a celebration. And at that time, the child was given every single legal standing as every other member of that family. In other words, once adopted, that child became a full member of that family, along with receiving inheritable rights. God has adopted us. Amen. And now that we have every legal right to the kingdom of heaven, if we would only know it. That's right. The Bible says we are heirs and joint heirs with Christ. <clears throat> and so, if we're heirs of Christ, then are we not entitled to everything that he has? Amen. 
It belongs to us. It's part of that inheritance that we have been given. Most Christians do not have a clue as how much they really have through Christ Jesus. And just like Farmer Yates and his family, if they do not know it, they certainly cannot use it for their good or for God's good. You know what I'm going to tell you what today? You can't do it alone. You can try all you want to, but you're never going to get anywhere on your own. Think about it. Look at most of the great businesses that flourished flourished in this nation. I'm saying flourished as in past tense because you see a lot of them going downhill. But it's because of the choices that the people who've inherited them have made. The leaders of this country were sound in the word. And I believe that the Lord gave many of the thoughts and ideas to many of the great things that we have today. In fact, I know He did. Because the Bible says that all inspiration comes from God. And yet we see so many things going downhill. But we look, and as the generations have, as, as the children have inherited the things of their parents and, they, and it passes down, they just get more involved into what's going on and what's taking place in the worldly sense. They lose sight of, of the spiritual side and they begin to lose sight of everything that they have. Because they don't realize that it's God that's given them everything that they have right now. And yet it's so sad to see that. But if anyone at any time would step in to what God has already given them and run after it a hundredfold, they would soon see how God is taking them where they could never get themselves. How God is now providing for them when they could never pre- provide before. Praise the Lord. Verse 6 says, We have been given these things because of God's glorious grace, but it also says how we can receive them, and that, the, and that place is only through the one He loves, which is Jesus Christ, the Son. Amen. There's only one way to get into that blessing realm. That's, right. That's by accepting Jesus as our Lord and personal Savior. And I hope that all of us here have done that. So that we can be walking in the fullness of all that God has for us, especially in these days and hours. And for everybody on Ustream, the Lord has so many great things in store for you. If you'd only lay hold onto the promises that He's given onto you. That the windows of heaven could be opened up upon you. That God's greatest blessing can be poured out. That you might be victorious in these times and these hours. Praise the Lord. I know that. I I praise the Lord for all the blessings I get each and every day. And I keep praising Him for the ones that I haven't gotten yet that are on their way. Because I'm not satisfied with just a little bit. I'm not satisfied with just getting by. I'm not satisfied until I have everything that the Lord has given unto me. Amen? And that's where we need to be, and that's where we need to be walking. Because that's where we're going to get the true victory. Hallelujah. In verse 7, we see that Christ redeemed us. That means that we have been bought back by the blood Jesus shed on the cross. Because of that blood, God has given us forgiveness of our sins through His grace. And so you see that it's by God's grace. Because He loved us. Not because we were worthy of it. Because all men have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But God, through His grace, gave His only Son for us. Not only that we might be saved, but that we might be adopted and be able to step into everything God has for us. Because He desires for us to have that abundant life. And I'm not just talking about prosperity. There are a lot of people who want to preach prosperity and tickle the ears of the people. And yes, God wants us to be prosperous, but we can't sit 
on our seats and get prosperous. Amen. We have to be drawing closer to the Lord. We have to be doing the things that He's called us to do. We must be going where He says to go. We must be walking yeah. with Him every step of the way. And when we do those things, then He opens the windows of heaven and blesses us. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you what those two words mean. <clears throat> Sorry, I missed a... We talk a lot about grace and mercy. Let me tell you about what those two words mean. Mercy, not getting what we should get. God's wrath and punishment. Grace, getting what we shouldn't get. God's love and forgiveness. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. He redeemed us from bondage. He redeemed us from the from the bondage of sin. Ephesians 1.7 In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Amen. I like that last part. Yeah. In accordance with the riches of God's grace. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's not miss out on anything He has for us. That's right. The blood of Jesus was an important way of speaking of Christ's death. His death points to two wonderful truths, redemption and forgiveness. Redemption was the price paid to gain freedom for a slave, Leviticus 25, 47 through 54. Through his death, Jesus paid the price to release us from the slavery of sin. See, most people don't know it, but we're all under a curse. The curse of the law. The law of sin and death. That's right. Until Christ redeemed us from that curse. And until we walk in the fullness of that redemption through the shed blood of the Lamb, then we don't, we don't have the new life that He's created for us. Right. Through His death, Jesus paid the price to release us from the slavery of sin. Right. How much longer do you want to walk and be a slave? I know I wouldn't want to be a slave. You know, I know um, I was four when I asked the Lord to come into my life. I thank the Lord that I was raised in a Christian home. Amen. But there was still a time when I wanted to walk in the slavery of sin. Right. And the Lord brought me out of that. And I praise the Lord for that. Yes, hallelujah. <clears throat> because I don't want to be in bondage. That's not a fun place to be. Praise the Lord. Christ has made the way for us. Forgiveness was granted in Old Testament times on the basis of shedding of animals' blood, Leviticus 17.11. Now we are forgiven on the basis of the shedding of Jesus' blood. He died as the perfect and final sacrifice. There's no more sacrifices needed because the great sacrifice was made. It was perfect. It was complete. Ephesians 2.19 tells us that we are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens and members of God's household. That's right. Fellow citizens and members of God's household. Amen. We're not a guest in God's house. That's right. We're family. Amen. Everything He has is ours. That's right. Now, if, <clears throat> if we are members of His household, do you think there are any duties we might have? Absolutely. God doesn't just want us sitting around on our duff. Every member of every household I know has some kind of duties. Right. Even I have duties at home. My wife will tell you. She'll pick up, but I got a vacuum. Amen. When I was a child, one of my duties was to take, take out the trash, mowing the lawn, etc., even for myself, I still take out the trash now and then. We load up the truck and haul it off to, to the dump. <clears throat> I can remember that like it. <laughs> Pastor says he grew up out of that, yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I can remember that like it was yesterday, but I cannot remember just why it was that I hated that job so much. Looking back on it, that job doesn't seem like much, but I hated doing it. I hate doing it still. <clears throat> if you were to ask, <laughs> if, you, 
If you were to ask Pastor and Sister Evans over to your house for dinner tomorrow, one of the first things you would do is make sure all of the dirty socks were picked up, right? I know my wife won't let him come over unless she had everything picked up. <clears throat> you would probably go out of your way to make sure that your house was clean so we would not see any mess. Don't you think then that as members of God's household, we should ask Jesus to fill our hearts and take away the junk that's there? If we are going to ask Jesus to come, if, if we were, are going to ask Jesus to come to our hearts, don't you think one of your first duties would be to make sure all our dirty laundry and garbage has been taken out so that Jesus would find a nice place to live in? Amen. We don't want it to stink. That's right. We want the stink to be gone. Amen. I wish all Christians would live by that and get some of the stink out of their life that they've allowed to come back in. Amen. And it's never too late. Because God has left the door wide open at any time for anybody to repent. Amen. What are some of the things in your heart that you know you should get rid of before Jesus moves in? You know what they are, don't you? He does too. And He wants you to start cleaning your heart and preparing for Him. How many of you think your body has a spirit? Raise your hands. I have some news for you. We are not bodies that have a spirit. We are spirits that happen to have a body. Amen. We are spirit beings. Amen. The Bible is very clear about that. It will not be our bodies that are gathered up to Jesus. Right. It will be our spirits. Amen. Our bodies die and turn to dust. They go back into the ground where they were created from. It is our spirits that live on forever. <clears throat> In 1 Thessalonians 5.23, it says that God himself will sanctify us through and through. Amen. We need him to do the cleansing. Amen. We need him to do the cleaning. Right. He'll take out the trash if we let him. But we have to come to that place and say, Lord, I have a problem here. I'd like to take care of this. Sometimes it's hard. Because we don't want to admit to our own problems that we have, even though we know we have them. But praise the Lord, when that time comes, when we realize that, the Lord is waiting for us with open arms, saying, I knew you would come. I knew you would come. I knew you wanted more than what you had right now. I knew you wanted to be more than you are right now. For he called us. He purposed us. He had a plan for us even before we were formed. Even before Adam was formed, he had a purpose and a plan. Praise the Lord. The word sanctify means to be set apart from the rest. We are set apart from the world because we have been sanctified in Christ. Hallelujah. The verse goes on to say that may our spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of Jesus. Our spirits are first named because why? Because our spirits are us. And our spirits just happen to have a body that it lives in while we are here on this earth. Right. <coughs> Excuse me. Turn with me to Ephesians 2, 1 through 4. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sin, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath. But because of this great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. 
And it's not anything that we can do because it's a gift from God given freely to us. But like any gift, we have to accept it. If I was to hold out a $100 bill, somebody's got to jump up and accept it. I know there's lots of people that accept it. I had some $100 bills that went in the offering this morning. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. But, you know, we, we have to make that choice. We have to choose life. Praise the Lord. In Ephesians 2, 1 and 2, we find that before we had Christ in us, we were dead in our sins because we followed the disobedience of the world and not God. In verse 4, it starts off by saying, but because, but because, it is because of God's great love for us that we have been saved from the eternal torment of hell. Amen. And I got news for you. If you really want to study on hell, you've got to study a little bit further. Because we're all told about hell. But later, after the great white throne judgment, do you know where everybody ends up in hell? The eternal lake of fire. Where they are tormented forever. I don't know how you could even think of anything worse. And I wouldn't want that for anybody. Or myself. It is because of God's great love for us, extended to us through Jesus Christ, that we have been saved, and not because of anything we have done, or said, or thought. But because, that is one of the most beautiful phrases in existence. But because. But because He so loved us. Abraham would have died an old man who had no inheritance. But because God loved him, Abraham became the father of many nations. Amen. Moses would have died a stuttering shepherd. But because God loved him, he became the deliverer to God's chosen people. Amen. In fact, Moses wouldn't do it at first. God had to get Aaron to do all the talking for him. But when it came down to it, it was Moses who God had anointed. Amen. And eventually Moses got to that place where he didn't need Aaron anymore. Amen. In fact, when Moses went to the mountain to get the Ten Commandments, you know what Aaron did? He built an idol for the people. Right. He wasn't the one chosen by God. Moses was. Amen. God just used Aaron to get Moses into the place where he needed to be. We would have all died miserable, unhappy sinners, but because God loved us, Amen. He allows us to be adopted into His family. Right. See, He allows us. Right. Not us. He's chosen us. He wants us to be adopted into His family yeah. with all the rights that Jesus Christ has in heaven. Right. All of the rights. We have all that power. We have all that authority. Amen. As soon as that new spirit enters into us, as soon as we choose to die to self and to live in Christ. Amen. As soon as we become that new creation. But because God loves us, He has given us every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm. Amen. But because, what a wonderful raise, to, what a wonderful praise, excuse me, I can't get, what a wonderful phrase to praise God for. But because, Amen. but because, Amen. Praise the Lord. But because God loves me, I have a spirit, and that spirit praises God that I have a purpose in God's kingdom, and so do you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We need to be giving him the praise and the glory. We need to be shouting the praises to our God and our Father because he has adopted us out of the filth. He has taken us out of the filth and given us new life. And that life more abundantly. And oh, that we would walk in that abundant life that He has for us. Oh, the joy. Oh, the blessings. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Gets me excited to talk about it. It gets me excited to think about it. <clears throat> because that's what God wants for us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
But because God loves me, I have a spirit, and that spirit praises God that I have a purpose in God's kingdom, and so do you. I told you you were chosen by God. That is wonderful. Being chosen by itself is wonderful. <clears throat> but being chosen by itself does not help much. That is only the first step. Praise the Lord. And it's always great to be chosen. Amen. You know, you always, you know, always hear people joking about be the, being the last one chosen. Do you ever know anybody who was always the last one to get picked? Well, I can tell you what. God didn't pick anybody last. That's right. He chose us all first. Amen. By sending His own Son. Yeah. His one and only Son. Glory. I told you, you were chosen by God. Praise the Lord. After God chooses us, there's something that we must do. We must accept it. Amen. Let me explain about being chosen and then accepting that choice. Let's say I am at home sitting in my chair and Hannah comes in and puts her hands out. And her hands is a beautiful watch that she says she has purchased for me. Now, what would happen if I yelled at her in anger and said for her to get out away from me and to never do such a thing again? Well, that'd be pretty foolish. That would break her heart and end up with my having no gift at all, wouldn't it? I wouldn't get nothing. And I'd lose a friend. Or in my case, a niece. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. What would happen if she handed me that watch and I looked at it and then put it on the mantelpiece behind a picture saying, I didn't want it now, but maybe someday I'd wear it. Wouldn't that also break her heart? And if I did that, I wouldn't end up with the gift either. Now, let's say that she handed me that watch and I said I didn't want her to give it to me, but I would love to have it, so I would pay for it. That really doesn't make any sense either. Now... What does that watch have to do with the message of God? Well, it has everything to do with it. Many people yell at Christians and persecute them all because they do not want the gift. Still others see that it is worth having, but they don't want to stop having worldly fun right now. So they decide they will get salvation someday. I went to school with somebody who said to me, Well, David, I know you're right, but I just don't want to do that right now. Well, I got news for you. The end for you is destruction. That's right. Because you're never going to choose God. Right. You're always going to choose the, the ways of the world first. And I see this today. To this very day. Because they've never taken their own wants and own desires of following their old worldly lusts out of the way. That's right. They've never let God come in fully. Still, others think that the gift of salvation can only be obtained by good works. This is like trying to buy salvation, but salvation is something that we cannot buy or earn. It is a gift. The only way possible to get salvation is to accept it through Jesus Christ. Amen. There is no other way to receive it. How many of you eat? <clears throat> How many of you eat tinned food? I think just about everybody eats food from a can at some point. When companies make tinned food, if they just put it in a can without sealing it properly, the outside air would get in and ruin the food. By sealing it, it stops the outside from getting in and the food stays fresh. Amen. Ephesians 4.30 says, We are told we have been sealed in the Holy Spirit and we are not to grieve the Holy Spirit. That, that means that by being sealed in the Holy Spirit, the outside cannot force its way in and ruin us. We are kept sealed and holy for the day of redemption. If we turn away from the teachings of Jesus, we grieve the Holy Spirit because we break the seal and let the outside get into our hearts and that spoils us. Amen. And I know that we all know if we open that can, it doesn't take too long before the food is spoiled. If you leave it in the can, it will keep forever. Amen. And that's what the Lord has done for us. Yes. He sealed us. But it's us who at times wants to open the can and let some of the bad air back in. You know, they, there goes that old <clears throat> um, saying that if you hang around with worldly people, you're going to become worldly. That's right. 
You're not going to make them become godly. They have to choose to become godly on their own accord. But if we spend too much time around the wrong things and allow that bad air into our can, then we're going to spoil. <coughs> Ephesians 4.30 says, We are told that we have been sealed by the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. There was a young boy who went to church with his father and mother. When they entered, the little boy looked up and saw a cross on the wall. He looked at his father and said, Look, Daddy, a plus sign. <laughs> the cross would have only been a place of persecution but because God loved us so much the cross became a place that we find redemption and blessing Amen. that sounds like a plus to me yes. maybe we should look at the cross Amen. that way a plus sign Amen. we were added to the kingdom of God because of the cross yes. <clears throat> do you really know that you have all the blessings of heaven in Ephesians 1.3, it says that God has already blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heaven. Amen. Every spiritual blessing in heaven. That is past tense. God has already. Not God will when I get my life straightened out. God has already done it. So as soon as we decide we're going to follow, it's already given to us. But because we don't know it, we don't receive it in its fullness. Right. We don't receive it completely. Right. And if we have been blessed, that means we are members of God's household. Praise the Lord. Amen. And if we are members of His household, we have a divine purpose. Right. Do you know what your purpose is? Would you like to find out what your purpose is so you can access all of your blessings? You have not because you ask not. Amen. So if you need direction, ask direction. That's right. If you need a word from the Lord, ask a word from the Lord. Right. He has said, I will give you all wisdom and knowledge and all the things you have need of. Right. Praise the Lord. Amen. So if we don't know, we need to ask. Right. Part of the key is how you view your relationship with the Lord Jesus. Do you talk to him like you talk to your father? Do you talk to him like another family member? Do you have that close communication with him? He is part of you, and his presence should be so profound in your life that when you look around, you should expect to feel his presence. Amen. Praise the Lord. I know when I walk into the house of the Lord, I feel his presence. Amen. I know when I get into the Word, or I get into worship, or I get into praying that I get into the presence of the Lord. I can, I can feel the difference. Amen. Because all of a sudden, all these things around us seem not to matter as much. Right. Because we're getting out of this earthly, earthly realm and we're stepping more into the spiritual realm. Amen. Where God can speak to us. Yeah. Where He can bless us. Where He can use us. Wow. And God has told us that He wants us to be walking in that realm all the time. So let's not just walk in it part of the time, but let's grab a hold of all the fullness God has for us and let's run, let's run, let's run, and let's be in that spiritual realm all the time. Lord. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> when I stop to look around in my life and do not readily see His commanding presence, I feel empty and completely at a loss. That is because I love Him and I miss Him. That is when I instantly go into prayer, praising Him for loving me enough to be with me and asking Him to let me see His presence. And He always comes through and lets me see His influence or lets me feel His love, and then everything is okay again. Amen. See, things don't matter when we're in that presence. Things don't matter when we're in that spiritual realm. And that's why with the days and the hours we're living in, He's told us, walk in that realm at all times. Because he knows if we're walking in that realm, all these things that are going on around us aren't really going to matter. Even though they don't matter, they still affect us. None of us like to see people killed. None of us like to see destruction. But the reason we're seeing that is because people have made their choice. That's right. They've denied God. <clears throat> They've removed Him from just about everything. But praise the Lord for those who believe in Him, 
they still have his blessings upon their life. You have that same type of relationship with him today? Do you have this absolute need to be with him? If you don't, you have no idea just how much you've been missing. And he is giving you yet another chance right now to respond to him, and he will respond to you. The Bible says that if we draw closer to God, he will draw closer to us. And that is what you need to do this morning. Draw our hearts closer to him and expect his heart to be drawing closer to us. Praise the Lord. Because he has so much more in store for us than what we have right now. Because I don't know anybody that's walking 100% where God wants him to. I know I'm not there yet, but I'm working to get there. I'm expecting daily for the blessings to come. I'm confessing daily that I already have them. And that's what we need to be. And I see the blessings coming every single day. I heard yesterday of somebody getting blessed. They went to buy a vehicle and not even saying anything. The guy told them one price and they're doing paperwork and, and he just keeps saying, well... I guess you can have it for this much. I guess you can have it for this much. And when he was all said and done, he knocked $1,500 off. Amen. Why? Because the presence of Almighty God moves the hearts. Amen. And if we're walking in that presence, if we're allowing God to be our leader and guide and allowing Him to lead us, He's going to take care of this stuff for us. That's right. He's going to work it all out long before we get there, even if we don't know it. Let's close our eyes and bow our heads as we go into our time of communion with the Lord. Let's open our hearts and invite Him to come in. Praise the Lord. Father God, we just thank You this morning that if there be anybody here or all around the world that's watching that needs You and their, as their Lord and their Savior, let them do that today, Lord. Let them come into that saving knowledge of your mercy and your grace that you've laid out before us through the shed blood of your Son. Lord, if there are anybody, any of us here this morning that are not walking in the fullness of the blessings you have for us, they're not walking fully in the things you have laid out for us, Lord, that today they would get a hold of this word and they would begin to run, not walk, but they would begin to run with it, Lord. That they might receive all the things that you have in store for them, Lord. That they might be all that you have called them to be, Lord. The overcomers in this day, Lord, that you've called us to be. For truly these are the end days and we know that the hour is late and it is getting darker. But you have already made the way for us, Lord. And we thank you for that this morning. We thank you, Lord, that you are opening the eyes of those of the blind right now you are emptying the wheelchairs you are causing the lame to walk praise the Lord hallelujah the deaf ears to be open this morning Lord hallelujah we thank you for that we praise you for that in Jesus name we speak the financial miracles to those who need them this morning in the name of Jesus we thank you Lord that today is the day hallelujah today is a day of salvation not tomorrow not next week but today is a day of salvation for no man Man knoweth the day or the hour when the Lord cometh, for he comes as a thief in the night. Let us all be ready for that glorious day. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The altars are open. If you have anything that you need prayer of, please come this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Randy Johns. We invite you to Camp Meeting 2013 in Cortland, New York, July 3rd through 7th. Patty Dolan Hartsong will be here ministering in country music. 
as well as flowing in the spirit. Kickoff night Wednesday with Dave Rose. Other speakers, Reverend Donald Evans, David Forehand, Dennis Forehand, Dave Evans, and Randy Johns, me. We have activities for children, including children's church, horse rides, water slides, activities in the yard. Come and stay with us. Many sites for camping. All food is free. For more information, our website, www.rainingone.org. We want to see you there. Let the fire burn.